us. If this is what you guys want, then I will help you. I will train you. Even though I wasn't serious about training when I was real young, I always loved competition. I wasn't always able to be the champion. A lot of times I lost fights. I remember when I was five or six, I competed in a karate competition of systematic fundamentals, where I had to perform fundamental movements like katas. I lost that competition, and I was so sad that I cried. Shinzo fought in the same category, and he took second place. It was very frustrating for me. I didn't understand. I thought I should have won the competition, but it was a learning process for me. I had to learn that losing was just a part of competition, and that was good to go through that, learn that at such a young age. Since I was a child, my family lived on the top floor of the academy, so all the time we were there. I was very competitive, always curious about other styles. I'd watch the judo class, and I was convinced that I could defeat all the judo guys. I played around with it a little, but I wasn't a die-hard judo competitor. That didn't stop me, however, from fighting guys from other styles. I was always interested in seeing what other martial artists could do, see how I fared against them. In Belém, they had a large Japanese colony, and so I was also introduced to sumo. Every year they had a Japanese festival that held a sumo event with food and everything. So that is where I got my first contact with the sport around seven or eight years old. We played around, had fun, and fought at the same time. At the time, there was also a resurrection of jiu-jitsu in Belém, because jiu-jitsu came from the area. It had disappeared for a while, but then it came back in 93 when I was a teenager. So I started training with all the jiu-jitsu practitioners, and it even became one of the styles we taught in the academy. So I was always training the martial arts. If I wasn't training karate, I would be training judo with the boys in our academy, training sumo with the guys from the Japanese colony, or training jiu-jitsu. From there, I kept learning more styles. This was very good because every martial art has its strong points. The more martial arts you train, the more weaknesses you eliminate. For example, I didn't know ground fighting, so I began training jiu-jitsu. I dedicated myself to the sport, and it proved to be very beneficial for my growth as a person and a fighter. Sumo strengthened my base, which in turn helped strengthen my body and my mind. I even spent 40 days in Thailand learning the art of Muay Thai, which I had very little knowledge of prior to that experience. However, no matter what martial arts I trained, my foundation remained in the instruction I had received from my family and the training partners in the academy. Due to the resurrection of jiu-jitsu in Belém in 93, the UFC, which was being organized by Horian and the Gracie family, arrived to my area. Everyone was talking about jiu-jitsu this and jiu-jitsu that, that it was a better art for fighting. When people heard that there was a videotape floating around, everyone wanted to see it. They all began speaking so highly of jiu-jitsu. I too decided to check it out, and the moment I saw it, I knew that I wanted to compete in the sport of mixed martial arts. I was a kid though, 15 years old. I knew I was still too young, but I also knew that it was for me on the horizon. I still wanted to be a national and world karate champion, but I was conscious of the fact that MMA would continue to grow because the tendency was to eliminate rules to prove who was the better athlete. So after I saw the tape of the first UFC, I began to train more in depth in my martial arts, which were karate and jiu-jitsu, the two arts I lived for at the time. When I was 17, the first MMA event came to our city, and my father said that I needed to fight. Not only would it be a way for me to test myself, but also to know for sure if I wanted to be involved in this type of combat. So, I signed up and brought some shorts along, but the organizers ended up not letting me compete. They didn't know how it would turn out if it would be too violent for a 17-year-old. It was frustrating, but it didn't stop me from getting into the sport. For my first fight, I took on Kondo Watanabe, a Japanese fighter who was very experienced. 
If I had been allowed to fight in Berlin, it would have been in front of a couple hundred people. But here I was competing in front of 50,000 people packed into the Tokyo Dome in Japan. It was all new to me. Overnight I went from being a practitioner to being a professional. I was very happy to be there, but at the same time I was very nervous because I had never seen so many people in a stadium. I had seen that in soccer, but never in the martial arts. It turned out to be a very difficult fight because since it was my first one, I didn't have a game plan on how to win. I had no clue how the fight would go. Since I had trained a lot in the U.S. with wrestling and ground fighting, my tendency was to grab my opponent and take him to the ground so I could finish him off with a submission. That seemed like the right thing to do. I had not yet discovered my style. I knew that I had come from karate, but since I had been training a lot with wrestlers, I thought I should do wrestling. So I took the fight to the ground and tried to finish it. I won the fight and fought well, but I was not happy with my victory because I didn't see what I had done as my style. I had to complete my game, not just take my opponent down and hit him, but kick him and punch him from the standing position. If we tied up in the clinch, then I could go to the ground and naturally transition into the wrestling and jiu-jitsu, but not force the situation. I was a fighter and ready for any situation, to fight on my feet or on the ground. When I fought Rich Franklin, it was my third fight. He had 16 fights, I think, and was unbeaten. My trainers gave me a lot of psychological preparation, my manager too, but I still knew I had a lot to lose. They would tell me that he was unbeaten and a candidate for the belt, so you need to be careful with him. It was my third fight, and he had 16 fights. It was a lot of pressure, but thanks to my family and all those years growing up around the martial arts, I believed in myself and was able to handle it. I believed a lot in myself and what I could do. Every time I looked at Franklin's tapes, I thought, man, I can beat this guy even though he's so much more experienced. All he had was the luxury of starting the fighting game before me. So it was a hard fight, but I was able to get the KO and was victorious. In that fight, I used a lot of karate. My whole life, I repeated the strikes so many times that they just came out naturally. I kicked and punched instinctively. I was so conditioned that I didn't have to think. I reacted. And a lot of the kicks that I used aren't very popular in MMA. Most competitors use round kicks, but I threw a lot of straight kicks. When fighting Franklin, he'd throw a punch and I'd evade and kick him at the same time. In one instance, I evaded a punch and kicked him on the chin for the counter, knocking him out. So I KO'd him with an instinctive movement. When I was with the Noki's agency, I was given a chance to fight Michael McDonald in K1. This is about three months after my fight with Rich Franklin. I accepted it because I was working with Inoki, and I felt everything that he asked me, I had to do. This is the right way to be a part of a team. My thought has always been that I can't refuse anyone who is in my path to fight. I have to fight. This is very important. If you think like that, you become strong. I started my training, and it was going very well. Then I became ill with dengue, which is a tropical illness transmitted by a mosquito bite. A week before the fight, I had a very high fever, felt really sick. The dengue fever was in my body. I went to fight with McDonald, and all I could think about was that I couldn't be weak, that I had to show my best and try to do whatever I could to end the fight quickly. This would involve getting into close range with them. I knew he was a great striker, but I wasn't worried about that. I just wanted to finish the fight as soon as possible. So I got inside on him and brought it to the ground. When I was starting to pass his guard, he simply tapped. It was a perfect fight because it was so quick. When I was still working with Inoki, BJ Penn really wanted to fight against Fujita, a Japanese fighter who was the number one guy in the agency at the time. Fujita was number one and I was number two. 
When Fujita turned BJ down, he challenged Sakuraba, but Sakuraba also turned down the fight. Then I was asked if I wanted to fight BJ, and I accepted it the same minute I was asked. I really wanted to fight against him. I was in Japan at the time, but I came back to Brazil and trained for 20 days. Then I went back to Japan to fight BJ Penn. I knew he was a very solid athlete, very complete. He was an excellent fighter standing up and on the ground, but I have always believed in myself. As long as I had the right training, I could win against anyone. So I trained a lot for this fight, even though there wasn't that much time due to all the traveling back and forth from Brazil to Japan. But I did as best as I could, and thankfully I was able to play my game when we fought. I didn't let him impose his game on me. I knew he was a dangerous fighter and had been a UFC champion, but he was also going up in weight categories. He went from 85 kilos up to my weight, which was 99 kilos. This was very advantageous for me, but it was still a very tough fight, and I grew a lot from it. BJ has the mind of a champion. He is a small guy to fight me, but his strategy was very good, and he has skills of a true champion. In order to beat him, I couldn't hesitate, couldn't let him get his game plan going. If you allow him to do this, he is a very solid competitor who will make things difficult for any fighter in any category. Luckily, I was able to implement my game plan and defeat him. The agency I had been working for went bankrupt, and when they closed their doors, I began managing myself. It's hard to fight and manage your career at the same time, but I was lucky because the agency I am now with today invited me to be a part of WFA, an event that used to be here in the U.S. I received a good contract, and there were other good fighters in the event as well. Quentin Jackson was a part of World Fighting Alliance, and both of us fought on the first card. He beat Matt Lindland, and I beat Vernon White. It was a very successful event, but it wasn't on pay-per-view, which is why I didn't get more success from the show. The second event didn't happen. The UFC bought the contracts and took myself, Quentin Jackson, and Heath Herring into their event. This was a big opportunity, going from small events to the world's largest one, and since I joined the organization, I've been blessed with great fights. Although the majority of my fights had been in the ring, my fight in the WFA was in a cage, so I was already somewhat used to it, even though the dimensions of the cage in the UFC was a lot different. I didn't find it to be all that difficult of a transition. I am a standing fighter, my background is standing fighting, and I know I can do stand-up in any place, providing that I have the space I need to utilize the clinch and defend against takedowns. From the cage to the ring, or the ring to the cage, can prove more difficult, but not for me. In the end, I actually ended up liking the cage better. Sam Hodger was my first opponent in the UFC. He is a big, strong guy, but he didn't represent any danger to me during our fight. I managed to dominate him in all situations, striking, takedowns, and groundwork. I saw it as a great victory because I was able to use all aspects of my game with great success. After earning a decision over David Heath, I took on Nakamura. He is a fighter who came from pride and had fought some great names, such as Minotaro, Rogério Nogueira, Vanderlei Silva, Murilo Bustamante. There was all this mystery surrounding him, and he was also a very strong guy. However, I always trusted in my technique. 